G'day, this is the Rebel Brucey Express BES870. Um, this is going to be a demo video showing you how to use the machine, you know, from the beginning till the end, um, and giving you a few tips and tricks along the way. So, um, I'm making this video for a second time because my first one was quite a while ago, uh, and it was a bit lousy. Um, and I've gotten this really clean model to, um, to test and make a video on, so I'm using this opportunity to teach you all how to make a very good coffee or an excellent cup of coffee uh, from home. So let's start from the basics and the beginning. So um, the machine will come with a very good kit from startup kit from from the box. So obviously the milk jug, a stainless steel milk jug, cleaning kit which, which includes you know cleaning tablets, the cleaning rubber disc, um, cleaning pin for the milk wand, Allen key to remove the group head seal, and a brush for the grinder and the group head. So uh, that's the cleaning kit. It also comes with all four baskets, which almost no one does these days. It's only Breville that really includes all four from the box. So you've got all four, uh, two single wall, two dual wall. Um, single wall being the ones that you want to use if you have good coffee and using the internal grinder of the machine. Uh, dual wall are the ones that are a bit easier to work with. Uh, and you can use these for pre-ground coffee, as it says here. Use with pre-ground coffee. Or if you have a particularly old uh, bag of beans or decaf beans, they uh, usually are harder to dial in. So these are the ones that you want to use. Be this is because these create pressure, This even with a, with a large grind size and a coarse coffee. Whereas the single wall ones, uh, have many holes underneath as opposed to a dual wall with only the single hole underneath. Uh, so this will create pressure regardless of if you have coffee in it or not. So you can use this if you want a decent cup of coffee in a hurry without changing the group, uh, without changing the grinder settings here and the grinder amount and all that. And single wall are sort of a bit harder to use but you'll need to dial in uh, and they'll actually give you better coffee. Uh, you know, better crema, better taste, and everything. So, and uh, fun fact, these the single wall are actually easier to knock out of the porter filter, um, which is another plus. So I've got this the double single wall, which is the 18 gram double shot single wall basket, unpressurized, uh, which is sort of the standard one that they use in the cafes and in the professional machines. Um, and it's quite big, it's 18 grams, which is bigger than other other machines, like Ranchilio and Gargia. Obviously the manual, and um, they also include a razor tool, which I don't have a spare one at the moment. Uh, I don't recommend it though, it's not very useful, it's only for absolute beginners, and it's quite wasteful, so I don't, rec I don't recommend uh, using the razor tool. I recommend getting a scale and doing the coffee properly. Okay, so when you first turn on the machine, it'll make a pumping noise, that's just the machine filling the lines with water. Make sure you always have enough water in the water tank, at least up to the minimum. But if you see it close to, to the minimum, just fill it. Um, the machine will give you, it, it'll be really upset if you run it without any water and it will actually make a loud noise. So, If you run it without water for too long, you might damage the pump and the boiler. This is what it sounds like without the water tank. Uh, with, without any water in the water tank. It starts rattling, so you don't want to do that. You want to fill it with water and reinitiate the system if it ever runs dry. There we go. Cool. The machine usually takes about a minute to turn on and warm up. This will blink when the machine is warming up and these lights will light up when it's up to temperature. Quite easy. But it's good because you don't have to wait, you can start grinding straight away um, if you wish to, to save some time. You can leave the machine on for a while to warm up the internals and the top lid and the porter filter. So the, I think the machine will give you about 20 minutes before it goes into sleep mode. Uh, I usually, when I wake up, I just want to make my coffee straight away, so I don't have a lot of time to wait for things to warm up. So I like to begin with a blank shot. So I recommend this for everyone. Uh, get your cup, put the porter filter in without any coffee, and just run hot water through the system. So for example, in this case, I'm going to be running double shot. I can do that 
once or twice, it really doesn't matter. Once is better than nothing. So this will do a few things. So it'll heat up the, obviously the boiler and the lines on the inside. And it'll also, it'll also heat up your basket and pour filter, which is important for getting a hot and a good cup of coffee. And if you put your cup as well, it'll heat, heat up the glass as well. So, um, and yeah, if it has any dirt or oil that have been built up from the previous session, this will clean it up. So I recommend doing it. Um, there's no reason why not, unless you're running short on time. While that's happening, I'm going to take this opportunity to fill the water tank. You can just remove the water tank and fill it from the tap. Or just open the lid and fill it like this. So be sure to use clean water and cold water, don't use hot water. And never uh, do this when you're half asleep because you might end up putting the water in the bin hopper instead. And I've done that once. Not a fun experience. Thankfully the machine was alive, so. Um, yeah, so as you see, now the cup is sort of half full with hot water and the water is actually a little bit dirty, so that's some dirt that we've just cleaned up from the group head and the shower screen. So you can do that once or twice, it really is up to you, uh, but once is, I think, my recommended minimum. You can also use the hot water tap over here to um, either fill your cup with hot water to preheat it or to brew some tea or Obviously for long blacks and Americanos, uh, the machine will give you 250 milliliters of water when you turn this on and it will stop obviously at 250 milliliters, which is about here. Um, I also use it sometimes to pre-dissolve a little bit of my sugar. Not a lot of people recommend doing this, but I like to add sugar to my coffee and I like to add a little bit of hot water just to help it mix with the espresso. Otherwise, if I don't do this, um, my latte will have a very sweet last sip. So I don't, I don't like that. Um, just gonna add a little bit to keep the cup warm. There we go. This will give you clean hot water straight from the boiler. It will bypass the group head, which sometimes gives you coffee grounds and oils that you don't want. Cool. Um, I'm gonna leave this sitting here while I do the grinding aspect of this process. The grinding part. So. I'm going to show you how to, how to adjust your grind size and everything. This is a scale that I've got uh, to kind of make my coffee more consistent. So it's, it's really, really handy. I highly recommend it. It'll make your life easier. Um, I'm going to put it here so I can show you how I do it. This port of now is wet, so I'm going to take it out. I want to be sure to dry it before I start the grinding. You don't want water in here because if you do get any water, it will make your uh, coffee grounds clumpy and it will it'll ruin the consistency. Alrighty. Um, now it's dry. I'm going to measure. Obviously, I'm going to have to reset my scale to accommodate for the mass of the portafilter. 444. Um, okay. The grind size is one of the the grind size is one of the things that people struggle with. So, let's assume you're using good coffee, um, or at least a semi fresh bag of beans. I'm using supermarket beans in this video. Um, this is the Aldi brand, the Lazio brand, not a sponsor, um, but I find it quite good for the price. It, I think it's brewed. Oh, sorry, it's roasted here in Melbourne, uh, so it's quite uh, fresh in that regard. I've tried the other brands like Coles, Woolworths, Vittoria. Those are ma much more mass produced and they often lack crema and the freshness that I get from this one. So uh, obviously the optimal best option is going to your roasters or local cafe. I would highly recommend doing that because the coffees that you'll get from those beans are much better than what you'll get with supermarket beans. You'll notice the taste difference, the pressure, the crema, the color, a lot of, a lot of these things you'll notice improve with more expensive beans. But again, those are more expensive. For example, they'll, they'll range from 40 to 60 dollars per kilo whereas this is only 12 bucks per kilo so you can't, you can't really go wrong uh, if anything i would start on the cheaper beans just to practice and learn how the machine works and then i would upgrade to cafe quality beans sort of like a delicacy later on um, if you can afford it and if you can't i mean ld is more than good enough um okay so yes grind size um 
one of the more, more difficult parts. I have it set at number four. So you want the grind size to be fine enough to give you good pressure and good resistance and a good flow, but not too fine. Um, so there's sort of, in the manual, there's two diagrams that the machine shows you. So obviously there's a perfect flow, but there's, if it's too fine, you'll get black drops coming out of the port filter and the machine overpressurizing. Uh, so that's not good, obviously. You'll get um, too little flow, too little coffee. That's if the grind size is way too fine. Um, if the grind size is way too large, of course, uh, the coffee will just flow through without giving you much taste. Um, so you'll, you'll notice the coffee might lack crema, you might be low on the pressure, uh, and most of the time that's probably because your grind size is low. So you want it to be just perfect. Um, there are a few numbers that I'm going to throw on soon, so uh, don't get overwhelmed by the maths. Um, but this is a double basket. This will take 18 grams of ground coffee. So I'm going to use the scale to measure that. If that, if you don't have a scale, uh, there is another workaround, but I recommend a scale just to make things consistent. Grant is at number four now. I've, I've tried it at number five, number six. It was quite good, but let's try number four and see how we go. This is the grind size over here. If you push it away, it'll go finer. And it goes from one being the finest to 18 being the coarsest. And another thing is that over time, um, or depending on your machine, there's another setting that you might want to change as well. So I wouldn't recommend changing it straight away. I would recommend using the machine, if you're, especially if you're buying it brand new or close to new, I would recommend keeping the grind size as is. Usually it comes at number six from factory. So uh, there's a video on YouTube uh, on someone else's channel where they open this, take the, take the bean hopper out and uh, adjust the grind size. So you can change that from a six to a five or from a six from a five to a four if you're struggling with pressure and grind size but usually it's capable from factory i've adjusted this one uh, a little bit um and now i'm getting really good coffee um, so see how you go out of the box and if you need to you can adjust the grind size over here you don't want to adjust it too much too soon because that might damage your burr you know the burrs um, have serrated teeth and you, if you actually bring them very close together uh, the the teeth will sort of mash on each other and grind each other, I guess. The grinder would be grinding itself and the burrs might damage. So I wouldn't recommend going very, very fine straight, or, straight away. I'd recommend using the machine as is, see how you go. If you reach the finest setting here and you're still struggling with pressure and you notice the coffee still comes out very coarse, very big particles from the grinder, even at the finest setting, that's when I would start bringing the number here down to make things finer. Cool. Um, this is the grind amount. This is how much coffee the machine will give you. Um, I think uh, it should be good at one o'clock, but of course you have to try because different coffees will have different numbers here, different machines will have different settings. So don't use this video as a be all and all. I don't think that uh, the numbers are relevant to you. It's all relative. So my machine could have a number four here, your machine could have number 12. Um, so you have to try on your own machine. Each machine is different. So even if I get two brand new machines, they will have different settings. I can assure you that. So number four for this one, one o'clock for this one. Let's see how we go with the grind size. And I'm gonna to have to turn on my scale once more because I've been talking for so long. Um, this is the, grind, the filter size. So you can adjust it to grind twice the amount or just a single. You know, if, uh, if you wanna do it in one go, you can put it on double, but I prefer it at single. Uh, and that's because I can measure the coffee halfway uh, press it down, see how I'm going, and then do it again. It will be less of a mess, I guess. Um, so it will uh, not spill over if you do it this way. Whereas if you grind a double straight away, it might spill over the edges. Cool. So I've done that. Let's see how we go. Single, grind size number four, one o'clock. <laughs> Okay, that's 9.2. I'm happy with that. Let's see how we go. Um, I'll do it again. So obviously, um, 18 grams divided by two is nine. So I want to do this twice. Let's see how we go. <laughs> Cool. 
please don't be triggered by my, te my technique. I'm not a barista and I'm not a perfectionist, but I do like coffee and I've been making coffee for a while now, repairing coffee machines for a while now. So, you may try what I'm doing, it may help you, but if you have other tips, go for it. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try to create a sort of flat ish surface before I press it down. So that was 18 grams on the dot, I'm happy with that. I'm going to try to flatten it with my finger, you can use your palm. Don't press it too hard just yet. Grab your tamper. And then press firm, nice and hard. You can put it on the table, it'll give you more force. I just like to do it in the air, um, I don't see why not. So you need to be firm with your tamper, you don't need to put, put, you don't need to put your entire body weight on it. Make sure it's firm and make sure you like put even pressure all around, you don't want to make it tilted or uneven, you want it to be even and clean. So this is what I'm, what I end up with. A clean surface, it's flat, and there are no gaps. And um, see how I said a scale is recommended? Well, if you don't have a scale or um, you're still waiting for one in the mail, you can use the tamper sort of as a guide to how much coffee you have in the handle. So as you saw, I have 18 grams of coffee. And what I've found is that this is the depth that the tamper goes after I've damped it and pressed it down. So I've already pressed it down. This is how the tamper goes. As deep as the silver cap here, which is about the same as the razor tool that Breville includes. Um, so that's why I don't use the razor tool because I already grind 18 grams. I don't need to waste any coffee. That's how close from the edge. So you wanna put, grind to this depth. If you grind it more, that would be too much coffee. So that will give you issues with locking the porta filter in. It will be very tight if you put too much coffee and the pressure might be too high if you grind too much coffee. If you have too little coffee, um, you might also get very low pressure or very watery coffee. So you want it to be sort of in the 18, you know, 17 to 19 range, preferably on the 18 gram dot. Um, but of course, different coffees will have different densities. So see how you go. Um, I'm going to clean the rims before I put it in the head, in the machine head. Uh, on fresh new machines or close to new machines, the seal, the group head seal here, will be very fresh and like thick and supple. So uh, you might not be able to turn this handle all the way to the right. Um, so um, I've reached six o'clock, which is dead center, and it's already tight. I don't want to press it any harder. Um, on older machines, you might be able to go all the way to five o'clock on the right. Um, but in this case, six o'clock is more than, more, more than enough. If you ever lock it in beyond, if you lock it in uh, before six o'clock, so let's say five, um, sorry, seven o'clock here on the, on the left, you, you might not put enough pressure on the seal and the coffee might be leaking, might start leaking from the, uh, from around the porta filter, uh, from the handle. So, um, if it ever leaks from here, just make sure you tighten it a little bit more. In this case, it shouldn't, it's at six o'clock. I'm happy with that. Okay, that's grind done and dusted. Usually when you, when you use these settings, they'll remain more or less the same. So you don't need to change much, especially if you keep using the same coffee. Um, maybe over the years, I'm gonna have to in reduce my grind size or change my dose or something. Uh, because obviously the grinder motor wears out over time, the burrs wear out over time, and you might have to adjust for that. And of course, different beans will have different resistance to grinding so you might need to change the settings for the different bean types that you use okay that's the grinding done um let's brew some coffee now here's my cup i've uh, emptied the hot water i might add a little bit just to dissolve my sugar just, just a little bit Just a little bit of sugar. Perfect. So yeah, if you have any, if you like hazelnut or sweet nut or sugar, you want to probably add it before the espresso shot is brewed, so that when it comes down, it mixes it nice and beautiful. Um, these buttons here, when you're brewing the coffee, these buttons are adjustable. So 
You can program the single cock to however long you want it. You can program the double to however long you want it. Um, from factory, usually it's a little bit longer than I'd like. So from factory, this is about 60 milliliters, 60 grams. Uh, this is about 30 or 40. Uh, so I'm gonna make, I'm gonna change that. It's quite easy. Um, but if you ever want to reset to factory, you just hold program and that will reset. The machine will beep and then that will reset the cup sizes. Uh, I'm gonna use the scale again to get a perfect, you know, 36 gram dose. Um, you, you know, 35 to 40 should be okay. Um, I'm not too fussy. Usually it tastes quite good between 35 to 40. So that's what I'm gonna aim for. And I wanna be getting that say 36, I want to be getting that 36 grams in, um, let's say 25 seconds, 20 to, tw 20 to 30 seconds from the first drop. Again, like I said, there's, there's going to be a lot of numbers uh, and you will have to experiment to get these numbers. But yeah, I want to be getting that 36 grams in about 20 to 30 seconds. Cool. Now that we've clarified that, let's make an actual copy. So you want to keep an eye to a few things so obviously the timing when the first drop starts coming out how long it will take for you to get the right dose which I've memorized to be about here and you want to look at the pressure gauge and the flow you want the flow to be nice and smooth not too quick like I said like it shouldn't be like black river coming out um, and not too slow like black drops right the way you program, oh, and the pressure gauge, you want it to be around 12 o'clock, you know, 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock, that's okay. 12 o'clock is the thing I usually aim for. So I think I'm going to be getting close to 1 o'clock here, which is fine. It's perfect, actually. 1 o'clock is around 9 bars of pressure. So program, this is how you program the buttons. I'm going to be programming the double. Program, and then press the double. One o'clock, perfect. It's a little bit quicker than I usually like it. That's okay. It's about 15 seconds. I'm gonna stop it right there. That's 15 seconds. I, it would have been better if it was close to 20 seconds. So that means I'm gonna have to adjust my grind size to maybe three or two. Um, it could be my beans. I mean, this bag is about two weeks old now. Um, so this will probably be easier with a fresh bag of beans, but here's what I, what I meant. The flow is nice and smooth. I got about 40 in 15 seconds, 45 actually, so a little bit more. Um, so yeah, it was a little bit quicker than I'd like, but as you saw, it was a nice flow. I've got some wood creme in here and, uh, smells really good as well. Yep, so in this case it was a little bit runny, so I would reduce the grind size and perhaps um, change my beans if I really wanted to. I could go to a fresher bean and the pressure would probably be better than this. But this is more than, more than good enough for me. Uh, knock the uh, coffee out, you don't want it to be sitting there, it's going to get stuck if you leave it there. And uh, I like to run a blank shot after, just to clean the grip head and grip, clean the porter filter. Um, and keep it fresh. So again, double shot, hot water. Cool. And then I'm gonna lock it in. I think it's okay to keep the porter filter in the head in the machine overnight. It's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, but don't put this in the dishwasher, it will ruin your glue. Cool. Now, let's do the milk part of this drink. So after you've done with the machine, um, actually at all times you want to keep the drip tray in place. Um, that's because the machine will purge hot water and dirty water into the drip tray after this shot. It'll also purge when you first turn on, as you heard, and it'll also purge after doing your milk. So, you want to keep the drip tray in place, otherwise you'll get a leak on the counter. 
Um, I'm going to fill my milk jug. This is the, the milk jug that usually comes with the box. I'm going to fill it just below the spout or maybe on the spout line here. That's the recommended for a standard latte or cappuccino. Um, and the technique, you, you're going to have to learn as well, if you don't know how to already. Um, this being a single boiler, I'm going to have to turn on the, the steam mode. I'm going to have to turn on the steam and wait. It'll take about 10 to 15 seconds to start steaming, uh, which is quite quick actually for a single boiler. Most other boiler machines, like actual boiler machines, will take a minute, maybe two minutes to reach steam temperature. This is a thermal block, so it's quite quicker. I'm going to fill my milk while it's doing its thing. It's going to spurt out some water, which is the cold water before the steam starts coming out. Oops. If your drip tray is close to full, you might make a mess with the water, um, but that's fine. Once it starts steaming, give it a few seconds just to get stronger and stronger. And then the machine will give you about a five second window when you turn it off. So I'm gonna turn it off, insert my wand. Uh, if I don't, go back to steaming mode, it will actually cool down, but I'm not gonna let it do that. So, I'm gonna put the wand at an angle to sort of spin the milk in a circle and keep the wand close to the tip of the milk. I'm um, sorry, keep the tip close to the surface. Sorry, close to the surface so that I'm injecting air. And I'm gonna do this for about 20 seconds. This is the noise you want to be hearing, this hissing noise, that means I'm injecting air into the milk. I'm going to do this for about 20 seconds. If I do it for longer, I'm going to get a cappuccino consistency. If I do it for less, it's going to be more of a flat texture, fewer bubbles. So, spinning in a circle, in a, in a vortex, close to the surface of the milk. And then, I'm going to raise the jug to stop the, the aeration. So I'm going to raise the jug. Now I'm not injecting any more air. I'm just heating up the milk and spinning it, mixing it up. And I'm going to keep doing this until the, the, the jug is too hot to touch. So when I can't touch it for, say, half a second, usually that's 60, 60 Celsius is what I'm used to. You can get a thermometer. You can get a jug with a thermometer like this one, uh, which, is in, which isn't included with the machine. Um, so this is about 60 as you saw. So very important before letting the machine cool down, I'm going to turn on the steam to purge out. This will clean the insides and unblock the hole from any milk. You want to do this? If you don't do this step, the, the, the milk wand will get blocked by milk. And... And you want to watch it. Um, straight away. So grab a wet towel or a tissue, so kitchen towel. I'm gonna wipe it clean. Make sure I, I also cover the underside and the back side. If you don't wipe it straight away, it will be a pain in the behind to clean later on. So clean it straight away. Keep it nice and fresh. So if you take care of this machine, it will take care of you. Very easy to clean this machine. Uh, it's nice to so it's easy to service as well. Not too difficult to repair if anything goes wrong. So that's why they're a favorite of a lot of people. Um, they hit a good price point and they're actually quite easy to use. Um, and they make really good coffees. Um, yeah, not much to say about this machine. Just make sure you play with the grind setting and get the right pressure and flow. Make sure you get. Uh, make sure you do the cleaning on time. So there's two cleaning modes. There's the clean cycle. That's when this will start blinking. There's the descale cycle, and that's when the light will be solid. So if you're having trouble to remember, just look at your manual, or remember that solid will sink. So look down. There's the descale. That's if it's solid, it's descale. <laughs> it's a good mnemonic. Um, the cleaning cycle is where you get the soap, tablet, detergent, and put it in the handle. The detail cycle is where you get acid and put it in the water tank to remove any calcium. 
two different cycles, but I recommend doing both on this series of machine. Here's my coffee. I'm not a barista, but you can do latte art quite easily with this machine with enough practice. Um, I haven't practiced, I just like to drink coffee for the taste. But almost always tastes really good and even looks good a lot of the time. Is what my latte slash cappuccino looks like. Very nice and smooth. I'm sure you'll be getting as good coffee or better than your local cafe on this machine with the right bean and the right settings and the right practice. Hope you enjoyed this very long video. Um, hope it's helped you and stopped you from uh, being lost in the first few days when you get this machine. It can be quite daunting with the numbers and the different opinions out there. Um, not everything I'm going to say is 100% correct or the best way to do things. It's just how I'm used to doing things. So feel free to look at other opinions, other, other people's uh, views on how to make a good coffee. There's a lot of really good YouTube channels. And there's also the, the Facebook group, the Barista Express Facebook group, if you want to, if you want to ask people for tips or help, etc. Hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the video and I'm sure you'll enjoy the machine. And, uh, Feel free to ask me any questions or any issues you have with your machine. I'm more than happy to help. Um, so you can either contact me personally or on the on the comments down below. Um, and yeah, look forward to chatting with you. Cheers.